the delivery guy just dropped this off. And if it is what I think it is, yes, it appears to be. Aha! If this does half of what they claim it does, I'm going to be the happiest electronic nerd on the block. Okay, this is the case. It looks like there's some assembly required on the case. This is already assembled. So I will go uh, put the case together and I will be back and I will show you what I got. I was going to uh, just go assemble this and kind of skip over showing you how it happens. But uh, it's not as straightforward as I thought. These two long pieces have a different hole pattern. I don't know if you can see that. There's a, a square hole here and nothing here. The two short end pieces are okay. They're the same. But all these tabs and whatever can fit any of, of the different ways. So I guess I'll have to rip this open and uh, then we will see how this fits in here and which side piece goes where. Okay, and this appears to be static sensitive. So, um, yeah. Well, the first step is to identify the top cover. And this is the only way this is going to go in here. Like this, uh, you can see where the uh, socket is, where this is. I can see this is going to be a problem trying to get a part down inside that hole and then the uh, activate button. So this is obviously the top cover. This is the bottom cover. Apparently this is where the 9 volt battery goes down here. There's no hardware to hold it in, but um, just from the shape and whatever, that's what I would guess. Uh, this and this are the same. This side piece has a square hole in it, but I'll show you the other. There's nothing along the side of the device. Um, nothing along this side over here that you need the hole for. Uh, on this side there's a notch and that notch is apparently so that when this lever goes down it goes into that notch right there and that fits. Okay so um, yeah I uh, I already know that uh, we're gonna have problems with this ribbon cable impacting this side right here and I'll show you that close up um, but uh, yeah okay let's take another step and see how it goes here's a fail with a case this is end piece it's impacting that uh, ribbon connector now I could probably smash that in place but it also looks like the glass uh, of the display and the circuit board itself is going to come up in contact with this I think I'm going to end up leaving off this top, this top uh, cover part of the box. So here is the case without any screws in it, just stuff laying in there, laying in place. Yeah, this end piece is not going to go in there, it's going to impact that ribbon, so maybe I'll cut a notch in here. Um, but this will be up in place like this, so I'll have to do the measurement, cut that notch. Um, yes, here is the handle where it pops down into that groove. Um, this square hole, no idea what that's for. And this is the bottom side. And the top side. So let me go put some screws in here and uh, we'll see how that goes. There are four shorter screws. You see it? Compared to the longer ones, there's four longer screws, there's four spacers. So the four spacers go here, there's a hole up here. Normally you don't want reflection on, of your light, but in this case it works. Um, there's a hole here, and you want to be down here, here, here. Uh, you want to leave them a little bit loose, and what will happen is these uh, will line up with those four like that. Okay? So, we'll put those four in there, um, and then we'll have four extra nuts that go on top, I guess. Um, no, they didn't give me enough. So, these, uh, I'll have to back these off of here, put the board back down on here, and then put the nuts in place. 
Okay, I'm making the mistake so you don't have to. Uh, so you don't need the nuts on there, you don't want the nuts on there. Put the four screws in, four short screws in uh, with the spacers. Uh, get this mounted up, screw these down. Uh, which, which way should they go? Well, I'm putting them in nuts up. Uh, may end up showing that that's the wrong way too. But uh, we shall see. Okay, I will finish this up and I won't make you watch this, but uh, get these put on there and I'll be back and show you what I got. Okay, I have the uh, screws in place. Is there adequate spacing? Yes, between the top of the case and the screws. So yes, you can put the screws in nuts up. That'll work. Okay, so um, well, let's do the next thing. This is the case assembled and uh, you can see that it's all put together except for the top piece because as we discussed earlier you can see through this notch that that ribbon cable would impact this end, so I'm going to have to go cut a hole or something in there, whatever I decide to do. Um, also, I don't know about you, but I just lost a multimeter because I left batteries in it. They corroded, killed the meter. I don't like leaving batteries and stuff, and this battery is not convenient to change, and there's really no hold downs in it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm end up gluing these side pieces to the bottom, I think and make it so I can take the top cover off and in fact there's a really good chance I'll just end up operating it without the top cover because it's almost impossible to reach these test pads right there. Okay, so um, I really 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 want to get on to using this thing so okay uh, on to the next. My obsessiveness got the better of me and I had to mangle a hole to the end of there for that ribbon to stick through. Well as promised I have removed the top cover and I have glued the case together so I don't have to keep those screws in there. Um, one construction note, I am making mistakes so you don't have to. You see that hole right there? Uh, I believe it's supposed to go right there because you see that green LED thing? Yeah, there's uh, like two lines you can't see because the lights are too bright. Two lines come down here, converge right there at that point. So, yeah, I'm thinking that hole should probably be right there for some reason, but since I don't have a manual, I have no idea. Okay, just uh, again uh, letting you know that that's, uh, it would probably be best to flip this piece over and have the hole right there. Now that I've got the case assembled, you can see this one hole right here is to give a, a place for the wires to run. Now the wires are inside the case, you see that, I can't touch them. but apparently there's not enough space for maybe some batteries or whatever um, so they have a space for the wires to come out uh, on this thing that protrudes down so it doesn't put too much pressure on them so yes I'm pretty convinced that the uh, back is on there the way it was meant to be Here's something I had to figure out the hard way. You see this is numbered one, two, three, and then the rest of these are ones. Yeah, there's only three uh, unique test points on this thing. Uh, all the rest of these are the same. Like so, for example, number one over here is the same of all these number ones over here. And this number one on this side is the same as all these ones over here. So if you put a resistor like from here to here, it won't test because it's basically just in the same slot. Okay, so if I'm testing a resistor, I have to go from like, for example, one to either two or three over here and then it will work. Um, so yeah, uh, I had to kind of learn that the hard way, as I said, and for a transistor, you would go something like one, two, three. If it was a big component where you uh, have needed a lot of space, you might say put one lead up here in this one, uh, something down here in the three and then across over here into the two so they they kind of spread that out so you don't have to contort the leads around too badly so that's the socket over here you've got something similar going on again just three contacts and this is a two and this is a two so this up here and this part of the pad down here is the same connection so again you can test a three a three lead component but you have to make sure that it's all touching unique 
each of the leads is touching a unique pad. And then you punch the button and it will read out up here. So that's what we're going to be doing. First, let me do one wrong and show you what I was talking about. This one is in pin one and it's also, sorry, contact one and contact one. This is a 15 ohm resistor. When I punch the test button, ah, unknown or damaged component, okay? So the problem is I have this in pin one and this in pin one. So basically there's no component there. There's, it's only saying, uh, actually it's saying nothing. So, okay. Uh, let me change this, do it right. I'll put it in pin one and two, and then we will try it again. So here we are again, or in a one, if you look back here on the board, on the PC board, and we're on two, and I push the button, and yes, you have to push the button each time. It does not stay on, and it gives us a reasonable value of 14.9. Uh, for the uh, for the resistor, so that's correct. Just to be different, I've put this in uh, a number one slot over here. And I think I've got that in number three over there. Push the button. This should be a 10 mega ohm resistor, and yeah, it's uh, you know plus or minus, and it shows that I'm in a, a one contact and a three contact. Here I have a bipolar transistor. I believe this is NPM, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's actually part of a pair. I've got it wired to another one, and these came out of an audio uh, device, and so these are matched uh, transistors. So they're basically opposite, but they have very similar characteristics. And, okay, let me punch the button. And yes, it's telling me it's a it's a PNP and the HFE is the amplification is about 214 and it tells me the base collector and emitter so that's very nice let's uh, try the sister transistor and see what it says note that I've got this one in here reversed just to see if it's smart enough to detect uh, which is which and this should be a PNP if I recall correctly push the button and yes PNP and uh, HFE is similar uh, yeah so this uh, is a matched transistor pair I don't remember what this is it's in my transistor box so let's punch the button and see what it, oh it's uh, it's in the wrong place it's a, a dual diode and it tells you the voltage is on the diode Okay, so I need to reclassify that. That's why you want a device like this is because uh, if you strip components from boards, you uh, don't always know what you're getting and uh, if something's misfiled in your inventory, well, this is a quick way to identify it. Make sure you don't put a transistor in, or sorry, a dual diode in where you want a transistor. Now this one, I've kind of put the leads in an odd way to show you that uh, it'll work. Uh, don't, again, I don't know what this one is. It's in my transistor box. And it says it's a MOSFET. Okay, so it shows you, let's see, what is it showing us? The gate drain and source. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this is uh, very nice, very nice. Okay, let's try some different components. A word of warning, before you insert the capacitor in here, you need to make sure it's drained. Use resistor or whatever, but uh, yeah, and use precaution uh, because high voltage capacitors can carry a charge. A lot of them can carry a charge for a long time. Use the appropriate way to discharge the capacitor. Okay, that warning aside, uh, let's see what we got here. I don't know. I've kind of stuck it in here, just picked two, um, picked two of the contact points. And it looks like uh, 301 picofarads between contacts 1 and 2. Here's an electrolytic I was just trying out for the uh, demo here. And yeah, this is supposed to be 1,000 microfarads. It's not really very close to 1,000 microfarads. So uh, if I believe the meter, and I do because uh, it's shown some other capacitors are right on target, 
this is this capacitor is no good so it's uh, time to throw it away here's another capacitor that claims to be 1000 microfarad 16 volts exactly like the last one and yeah so this one's a lot closer so this one is good the other one's not that's a good justification for having one of these especially at the cheap price that they sell for okay next on the list are inductors this one's marked at 100 and I know that's for sure because I actually use an oscilloscope and a frequency generator and so forth and a known capacitor to to measure this one so it's marked as 100 it's pretty close to 100 uh, let's see what the meter says Uh, it's about 80, 80 milli, uh, 0 0.08 uh, millihenries or about 80 microhenries. So, yeah, not very accurate. Um, that's something I found about the meter is when it comes to inductance, which is one of my favorite things, it's kind of weak and has a really limited range. Let's try some other inductors and see how it goes. This is a coil I wound myself for kind of like a large jewel thief type thing. And I have no idea what it is. So, what does that say? Uh, 0 0.2 millihenries? Yeah, could be. Um, let's try some others of known value. This is another one I've measured using a scope and an oscillator and known capacitor. Um, so it's got a core in it and it's got a relatively short coil and let's see it thinks it's a resistor so that's a problem I found with this is uh, inductors like this uh, it thinks they're resistors so not uh, not quite sure what to, to do about that okay so that's it for inductors as we've seen today, this is pretty good with capacitors, in fact, detecting bad ones. Um, it's good with resistors, it's good for bipolars, FETs, things like that. It has a limited range with the inductors, okay, so that's the weak point. But you know, for six or seven bucks, I mean, if, especially if you strip circuit boards, wow, this is really worth having. Well, that was it. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your home electronics projects.